Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Bite Size History on History with Audrey D. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at the kingdoms that followed Sumer after Sumer declined in ancient Mesopotamia. We'll also be looking at King Hammurabi and his code and just how it still impacts us today. If you like this channel so far, please make sure you're hitting that like and subscribe button. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok under History with Audrey D, as well as support this channel through Patreon under History with Audrey D. Let's go ahead and get into our lesson on Hammurabi, his code, and the kingdoms that followed ancient Sumer. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at our standard, our learning goal, and our learning targets for today's lesson. For today's lesson, our standard is again going to be standard two, which is to describe the emergence of early civilizations. Our learning goal for today is going to be to determine the impact of key figures from ancient Mesopotamian civilizations. And our learning target is going to be to describe the accomplishments of Hammurabi and his code on government. We do have a few key questions today that we're looking to answer. The first of which is what civilizations followed ancient Sumer as Sumer declined in Mesopotamia? Another question that we're looking to answer with today's lesson is how did Hammurabi affect life in Mesopotamia? And what are some phrases still used today from Hammurabi's code? First up in today's lesson is going to be to look at a few key terms that will help us to better understand the core concepts of our lesson today. The key terms that we are looking at today include empire, code, and military. First up, as we are looking through our key terms, an empire is a large territory or group of territories governed by one ruler. A code is an official set of laws and a military pertains to soldiers, weapons, and at times, war. Now that we've covered our key terms, let's take a look at what led to the demise of Sumerian civilization and the rise of new kingdoms in ancient Mesopotamia. The Sumerian civilization began to die out around 2400 BCE. The city-states were weak and this allowed for the rise of new kingdoms in Mesopotamia. The kingdoms of Akkad, Assyria, and Chaldea rose to become strong empires and succeeded each other in control over Mesopotamia. First up was the kingdom of Akkad that came to power in Syria. These people were known as Akkadians. The leader, Sargon, sought to expand the kingdom and began to conquer the already weakened city-states in Mesopotamia and added them to the Akkad Empire. His empire lasted for more than 200 years before it was conquered by invaders. This is where we meet Hammurabi. The Amorites were the invaders who initially conquered the Akkadian Empire around 1800 BCE. They built the city of Babylon, which became known as one of the most renowned cities in Mesopotamia. Shortly after the Amorites conquered Mesopotamia and the Akkadians, the king of Babylon, Hammurabi, in 1792 BCE began to conquer the Amorite cities in the north and south. This was the beginning of the Babylonian Empire. Hammurabi was the sixth king of the Babylonian dynasty, which was located in central Mesopotamia and what is now present-day Iraq. Hammurabi is best known for his code of laws that he created for his empire. This code is where we get the phrase, an eye for an eye. Hammurabi's code is a collection of 282 rules, which set standards for merchants as well as created fines and punishments for the implementation of justice. 
This code of laws was carved into a large black stone pillar or stele. At the top of this stele or pillar is a carved image of a standing Hammurabi being told the law by Shamash, the Babylonian god of justice, who is seated in the image. Let's take a look at Hammurabi's code and how these laws impacted Babylonian society, as well as help set the stage for laws that we use in present day. As previously mentioned, it is believed that Hammurabi received his code of laws from Shamash, the god of justice. In this excerpt from Hammurabi's code, we get to read about the moment that Hammurabi was called upon to present these laws to his people. The Anu and Bel called by name me, Hammurabi, the exalted prince who feared God to bring about the rule of righteousness in the land, to destroy the wicked and the evildoers, so that the strong should not harm the weak, so that I should rule over the black-headed people like Shamash and enlighten the land to further the well-being of mankind. These words are part of the Blackstone Stele that is inscribed with Hammurabi's code. As we look through Hammurabi's code, we actually can see that there are sections dedicated to a variety of themes, which include family, justice, property damage, as well as malpractice, physician's care, building codes, and property and wage regulations. Let's take a look at how some of these laws might have impacted the people of Hammurabi's kingdom. Starting out with the section of justice. Code number one states, if a man brings an accusation against another man, charging him with murder, but cannot prove it, the accuser shall be put to death. Number two states that if a man has accused another of laying a spell upon him, but has not proved it, the accused shall go to the sacred river he shall plunge into the sacred river, and if the sacred river shall conquer him, he that accused him shall take possession of his home. If the sacred river shall show his innocence, and he is saved, his accuser shall be put to death. For the property theme, we see that code number six states, if a man has stolen goods from a temple or house, he shall be put to death, and he that has received the stolen property from him shall be put to death. Number 14, if a man has stolen a child, he shall be put to death. So far, we have seen a theme of a lot of they shall be put to death. Moving on, we can actually see that there are also some sections on irrigation, such as number 53. If a man neglects to maintain his dike and does not strengthen it and a break is made in his dike, and the water carries away the farmland, the man in whose dike the break has been made shall replace the green which has been damaged. And number 54 continues this in stating that if he's not able to replace the green, they shall sell him and his goods, and the farmers whose green the water has carried away shall divide the proceeds from the sale. In Moving into the section about personal injury. Now, in code number 195, it states, if a son strikes his father, they shall cut off his hand. Next up, we have code number 196, which is, if a man destroys the eye of another man, they shall destroy his eye. 197, if he breaks another man's bone, they shall break his bone. And 198, if he destroys the eye of a plebeian or breaks the bone of a plebeian, he shall pay one mina of silver. So this is exactly where we get our an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth saying from. It is from Hammurabi's code. And this is where we get the fair is fair mentality. And many of his rules or laws really did apply to this style of leadership and justice in their own way. Looking at physicians and malpractice, we can see 
Code number 215, if a physician operates on a man for a severe wound with a bronze lancet and saves the man's life, or if he opens an abscess in the eye of a man with a bronze lancet and saves that man's eye, he shall receive 10 shekels of silver. Now, another rule states, if a physician operates on a man for a severe wound with a bronze lancet and causes the man's death or destroys the man's eye, they shall cut off his hand. The Babylon of Hammurabi's reign is actually now buried beneath the water table. However, there were clay tablets that were discovered in multiple ancient sites that actually describe the type of person that Hammurabi was, as well as how he ruled over his kingdom. That's it for this episode of Bite Size History on History with Audrey D. If you like this episode, please make sure you're hitting that like and subscribe button. Also, make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I have a new episode out. If you have any questions about today's episode, please make sure you put those in the comment section below. And if you think any of these laws seem fair or unfair, I want you to make those comments too. We went through a lot of different laws and there were several that were extremely harsh and would definitely not be accepted by society today. But it's a really great offshoot for us to better understand where some of our laws and some of our mentalities as society actually stem from when we look back and see Hammurabi's code and how this was the first set of laws ever really established in a civilization. If you like this channel, please find me on Instagram and TikTok under History with Audrey D. You can also support this channel on Patreon under History with Audrey D. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next lesson.